Okay, let's try this one more time. We're bridging the gaps of all the um, ethnicity. I feel like I'm a million and zillion miles removed from East London now. And this project is called People in Your Neighbourhood, and it's the idea of bringing people together. A crazy mashup of Asia meets Kiwi meets UK culture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah, he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you got a better timing than that, Ricky. Score this is the drummer, by the way. Go, Ricky. Get you here. Welcome to the studio, a guest who I'm very excited to be speaking to, Mr. Stephen Hussey, who is bringing over a new music initiative to Auckland, Aotearoa, all around New Zealand, uh, called People in Your Neighbourhood. It's an initiative by the British Council, and it's a collaboration between us and Charlie Dark, who is another UK element that the British Council have brought over to showcase the diversity and talent in New Zealand. So the first thing I did when I heard about the project was look it up because I didn't know very much about it. Um, and as I've worked with Urban Soul quite a bit, I knew it was going to be a quality product and also I got to come to New Zealand. So yeah, I was chuffed. It's definitely musically, it's, an, it's we've taken it to another level. We've built on what we started last year uh, and taken it further. My name is Tainan and I am a producer and musician based here in Wellington. I'm half Kiwi and half Vietnamese and the aim behind my heart for the show was to explore my dual heritage and culture mm. through the music that you'll hear, through the visuals that you'll see uh, behind us which incorporate black and white imagery that my father took in Vietnam through the 60s and 70s and through the um, amazing contemporary interpretations of traditional Vietnamese dance forms that have been choreographed by Amber Stevens. From the moment I got the recordings from David, 
to work on. I could sense that this was a very emotional um, piece and there was a lot of very deep um, emotions and, and subjects uh, in, in the actual song, even though I didn't understand the language, but I could, I could feel it. So that gave me just the sense of the vocal and what um, Nuang was, was um, the way she was singing it, gave me a, a, it gave me a good impetus and a good reason to, to, to go quite deeply emotionally in, into that work. Okay, I'll just take it down. It's like a really soft, subtle piece. Just really simple percussion and the whole thing in the harp. This track's, this track's called Morning Awakens. And it's basically mum singing about waking up in Saigon, her memories of waking up, the smell of rice in the morning and stuff like that, looking out. And there's one part where she actually sings about it, but she hears the hutil vendor. The hutil is like, um, kind of like the ramen noodles of Vietnam. Bicycle vendors would just carry like a pot of soup on the back of the bike, and they'd have two kind of, kind of like claves, and they just tap a tick tock, tick tock. So you'd hear them, and you'd be like, oh, you're sweet, hutil vendor. I'm gonna go down and get some of that. So she sings, she actually sings tick tock, tick tock as part of the lyrics. <laughs> I'm on the ferry going to is it Waikiki Beach, Waikiki, which for some reason still feels like it should be in Hawaii. People are going to actually ask me about the highlights of my career and I have to say that this is definitely one of the highlights. New Zealand is a place I never ever thought I'd get to go and see and I've always wanted to come here so it's a really happy day. Obviously I'm trying to be cool and not kind of jump up and down and start screaming at my excitement but I'm really really excited. I'm just, at this moment in time I'd just like to thank Mr Shepherd for telling me that the pen is going to be my best friend because 27 years later look where the pen has brought me to. I'm from East London. My mother is from Ghana in West Africa and she was a very strict woman. Wouldn't really allow me to go out. So I was the last boy in my neighborhood to be allowed to go to the Notting Hill Carnival. Has anyone here been to the carnival? Oh, it's you lot. I'm gonna tell you a small story about the first time I went to carnival. And I will do this with one of my musical toys, which is down here because it does this weird stuff like this. So I'm going to just be talking like this and this, and then I like, like this. So I'm going to just be talking like this and this, and stuff like this. So I'm going to just be talking like this and this. So we're going to try and make something together. Here we go. between speaker stacks. Me, Remy and my best friend Comrade were skanking. 
to the sound of rap attack in the middle of All Saints Road. There were no postcodes in those days. No border patrols at bus stops and no little kids in baseball caps saying, Hey blood, what ends are you from? Hands around hips. We danced and we dipped and we kissed goddesses of carnival with Guinness on our tongues. We were young and 21 with degrees and like the record said, our lives have just begun. Drum claps were begging my feet to dance and the record was spinning round and round and the DJ was a one with the crowd. Live and direct from the control tower, the man the with man the power, man gets, power down. gets down. And I wanted to be him. I wanted to keep the party jumping with the records that I spin. I wanted to hear my name reverberate around the room and pulverize dance floors with sonic booms like Send this one out to the man like Charlie Dark in the dance or the East London Massive or the North London Massive or the West London Massive or the South London Massive. I wanted to be him. I wanted to keep the party jumping with the records that I spin. I wanted to be the sound of suffering and the James Brown scream. Say it, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I wanted to slow it down. I wanted to tie up loose ends. I wanted to keep the party jumping so it's slow and never ends. But for now... Wow, New Zealand, I've never been. Everyone says it's amazing, great. So yeah, I was, I was up for it. Even before I knew anything else, I just, I just heard New Zealand, thought wonderful. Fijoas, <laughs> they're like manna from heaven. <laughs> I've never seen them before, and a friend of mine was saying, you've got to try this fruit, Fijoas, and I came over saying, so like, Fiji's or a mixture of something and something else, and then I, I cracked one open in the supermarket. Fantastic. Love that Zephyr. My dad used to have one of these, right? And this is in the one exactly like this, a Humber. And me and my two brothers used to stand in the front seat. This is, you know, didn't have to wear a seatbelt, so we used to, my dad would drive and then got a handbrake down there. And the three of us would be standing up. And every time we went around the corner, we'd <laughs> hold on to dad's head. <laughs> 